hope you can see that. I don't know with my wiggling the wires around. I've got this one shadowed today, but we'll work on that. Well, as I said, it's been an interesting week, and Friday was a huge day, and maybe you can tell it kind of knocked me off center a little bit, but uh, we'll get back on track. Well, what do you do? How do you, han- how do you handle stress? I don't want surgery. Can't you just touch up the (laughs) x-rays? Hmm. Whoops. I got a kink in my neck in the teacher's lounge. Shanice, this is for you. I got a kink in my neck from grading on a curve. (laughs) Oh, I can't go there. I'd say all, I'd say all kinds of things. Uh, and, of course, my doctor told me to avoid any unnecessary stress, so I didn't even open his bill. I, we, let me know if you all want me to print some of these. This is the stress reduction kit. Bang head here. Instructions. Place the kit on a firm surface. Follow the directions in the circle of the kit. Uh, Repeat step two as necessary or until unconscious. If unconscious, cease your stress reduction activity. Uh, Boy, anymore these days, we're, we're seeing a lot more stressful situations and things that we thought we could depend on are failing. So many things are going through my mind right now, but I, I don't have time for all of that. But, but um, maybe you have been uh, in, st- in a stressful situation, whether it was a doctor's diagnosis or some other situation. Uh, uh, boy, let me tell you, there was 10 million illustrations about stress on the internet, most of which I couldn't put up here on the screen in church. And yet, the scripture that I'm writing this, that I'm studying this morning, talks about trouble. To the angel of the church in Smyrna, this is the message from the one who was the first and the last, who was dead but is now alive. I know about your suffering and your poverty, but you are rich. I know the blasphemy of those opposing you. They say they are Jews. You know, right here you can interpret this. You can, you can replace the word Jews with God's people. They say they are God's people, but they are not. Because their synagogue belongs to Satan. It's pretty strong words. Don't be afraid of what you're about to suffer. The devil will throw some of you into prison to test you. You'll suffer for ten days. But if you remain faithful, even when facing death, I will give you the crown of life. But if you remain faithful, even when facing the death itself, I will give you the crown of life. Anyone... With ears to hear, must listen to the Spirit and understand what He is saying to the churches. Whoever is victorious will not be harmed by the second death. You know, that's kind of what our, where our church is, I think. Well, the letters to the churches in Revelation, uh, it's always interesting to see, well, where are we? Where are we? Are we the church that's got our, literally, that we're, we're, we serve in the devil's front yard? Or are we the church that's falling asleep? Or are we the church that has forgotten their first love? I think a lot of the letter to the church of Smyrna applies to our church. We have struggled with all kinds of things. I've been here 10 years, working on 11, and we've seen people come through that were kind of false prophets, and, and then we've seen some other folks that were really, really good people, but they, they were misled in some ways. And, and uh, we've always tried to hold up the truth, speak the truth in love, you know, not, not condemn people just because maybe they disagree with us or something. But boy, sometimes. 
Now, one of the passages in the lectionary for the Lenten season today is over in Romans. And it addresses similar subject. So letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death. But letting the Spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. For the sinful nature is always hostile to God. It, it never did obey God's laws and it never will. That's why those who are still under the control of their sinful nature can never please God. Wow, that's strong words. Those who are under the control of their sinful nature can never please God. Now that sinful nature word right there can also be translated the sinful body. The lust of the flesh. And those who allow the lust of the flesh to control them will never please God. But you are not controlled by your sinful nature. You are controlled by the Spirit if you have the Spirit of God living in you. And remember that those who do not have the Spirit of Christ living them in them do not belong to Him at all. Those are strong words. You wonder why the Nazarenes over the years, have preached how strong, how we've preached this so hard, because the Bible makes statements like this. Those who do not have the Spirit of Christ living in them do not belong to Him at all. How can I, how can I caution you strongly enough? How can I urge you to make sure you have allowed God's Holy Spirit to do everything He wants in your life and that you listen to Him every day and follow His leading? That's really a sanctified life. Come on, clicker. And Christ lives within you, so even though your body will die because of sin, the Spirit gives you life because you've been made right with God. The Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, He will give life to your mortal bodies by the same Spirit living in you. Wow. It's not only that we have to discipline ourselves, but it's also the wonderful, wonderful message and the wonderful, wonderful news that Christ gives us life. He gives us victory. He gives us victory even in this world. You can go to bed at night, close your eyes and go to sleep because God's taking care of you. You don't have to worry. You can reach out and love people that Maybe aren't very loving to you. They even may be hateful to you. And you can still love them because the Spirit of God lives in you. Unfortunately, I have to put this in though. Suffering is a part of living in this world. Birth starts it off. How many of y'all have looked at this giraffe on this internet page? April the giraffe. And she now, according to the, her handlers, is in full-blown labor. And it's been going on for two days now. Woo, you think you ladies have it bad. Poor April is having trouble having her baby in April. <laughs> Carol found another video that a friend had shared over in Memphis Zoo where the, the mommy had had a baby and that poor thing fell five feet. Poof! Thanks, Mom. And then it starts trying to get up, and it was sad. And it was funny, but it was sad. Just get up on the front legs and try to get up on the back legs. And They even cut the video. I don't know how many times that poor baby tried to get up on its feet. Birth is painful. It's not fun. If they could talk, we'd have to wash their mouth out with soap, probably. It ain't fun. What are you doing? Suffering is part of living in the world. But you know, growing taller can be... Did you all, when you were young and you started growing taller, did you have growing pains? And I'm not talking about emotional. I'm talking about your bones hurt because they were stretching so fast. You know? Just, just growing is painful. Then, of course, growing stronger emotionally is painful. One of the areas where we're failing are children is in the, Ameri in the area of emotional growth, um, 
And, and everybody goes through this. Did you have, a, did, when you were in like grade school, did you have a best friend that just broke your heart? Just crushed your soul? That's part of growing stronger emotionally. And the, and the developing and finding out that some best friends are really not best friends. They're just BFFs. And they're not even the second F. They're just BFs. <coughs> best friends forever. BFF. Okay. Um, and how hard it is to try to comfort and comfort your child when they come home from school. They're my best friend. Wouldn't talk to me today. It's hard. Growing emotionally stronger is difficult. Now, how many of y'all have had to go to physical therapy for something? Pretty much everybody. It's a good thing. I'm not against it, but I don't like it. Okay, a little higher. Ah! I don't want to go higher. Do it anyway. Ah! You know, physical therapy or just intense exercise. I, I, I think about intense exercise almost every day. I still like those New Year's resolutions where, like, in 2015, they said, you know, buy a treadmill. And then 2016, it said, spend more time on the treadmill. And then 2017, it said, sell the treadmill. <laughs> but you know, if you make it through that physical therapy, and you look back on it, and you say, boy, I'm glad I did that. I can move my arm all the way up. Or my leg. Or I can walk again. We've talked to you about little Luca, the missionary instructor over at Southern Nazarene University. They have these three cute little kids, but Luca is four, and he's in a body cast from the waist down. His legs have to be in this position, and he's down to nine days. He can now count it on his own fingers, you know, and he's not been able to move those. And this week is really the first time they told us that he's getting really, really, really tired and asking how many days and actually crying a little bit. And they're doing everything they can to try to encourage him. But you know, after they get those cast off of Luca's legs, he's going to have a thousand chance, thousand better chance of walking like regular people. He could not walk before. And he wouldn't walk unless they fix those hips, pins and everything. And oh, But it'll be worth the pain. It'll be worth the struggle. It'll be worth the frustration. And as far as that goes, the itching. If you had to wear a cast very long, you know what I'm talking about. I've seen him take a coat hanger, straighten it out, and run down the cast and scratch. Another thing that's difficult, another thing that's emotional and painful and everything, is change. Just plain old change. Some of the change is very traumatic. Your loved one dies, that's very, very traumatic. But it's change, and you have to change, or else you're not going to function well, you might even die. Separation distress can kill you. Your husband or your wife dies, they say for a year, you need to be careful, don't even catch a cold, because you can die from it. You have no resistance to disease, because your mind and your emotions are so tied up in mourning and loss. And We know a lot about PTSD. It's more of an emotional thing than anything else. It's, it's a, an inability to control yourself and to, you know, it requires change. In the case of the PTSD, you have to release that difficulty that comes when you hear a loud bang, you know, a loud bang, and, you, and they, they feel like they're in the battle zone again, and they've got to learn to let that go. That's a major change. It's difficult. Change can be painful, emotionally painful. You know, and, and we know, we know, people get old, people pass away. I know. Not that many people that live to be 100 or 102 or We hear of them, but it's not that many. It's more nowadays. It gives us hope. Although I don't know what I'm going to do with another 40 years of life. I better not go there. Um... You can be prepared in your mind for somebody's passing or for a major change you know is coming, retirement or moving to another place or whatever. 
there was a picture, another picture I found while I was looking for stress comedy online. Uh, the girl had taken a selfie. She was holding up a pregnancy test. She was smiling real big. And in the background, her fella was like this over there. <laughs> change is coming. And change can be hard. Change can be pa painful. And you can be prepared in your mind. But finally, our human strength fails. And we need help. We need help. Sometimes we need a therapist or a, a counselor or an accountability partner that tells us now, you're getting into danger zone, get out of there. We need help. And God helps us. He knows how we feel and He cares. And He works to limit and reduce our suffering. Notice I did not say He works to prevent our suffering. He works to limit and to reduce our suffering. He knows your limits. Remember what Jesus said about the disciples in the Garden of Gethsemane? The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He knows our limits. And He understands. He knows how much you can do. And, and he, you know, there's times we'll come to God in prayer and we'll just fall down and say, God, I've done everything I can. I can't do anymore. I don't know what else to do. But let me warn you, don't cop out on him. He knows if you really could do something more and you're just making excuses. I understand. Sometimes you get tired of being the adult and you just want to be a kid again. Sometimes you want to be the one falling down on the floor screaming and kicking. Mm -hmm. I'm getting some amens on that one. And he knows. Best lesson I ever got when I was a teenager from Dave Breeze, a great preacher, really spoke to us teens. Said, God wants to know how you feel and it's okay for you to tell Him. God, I'm mad. God, I'm sad. God, I'm, my heart is breaking. It's okay. He wants you to tell Him. He's the best counselor listener there is. And He's working to help you. In fact, He's working to limit your suffering. He is with us by the presence of His Holy Spirit. He knows your limits. He knows also what you're capable of, and He will push you to grow stronger. And there you go. There's that change that hurts and nobody's fun. But there's one thing that I hope more and more, and I pray, like for my parents and others that I know, I pray that God will prevent them from suffering too much. I can't help, I can't stop that my children are going to suffer. But I can beg God not to let them suffer too much. I can't stop, that, can't stop that my parents are going to suffer. But I can beg God not to let them suffer too much. And I believe that's His will and that's a prayer He wants to answer. But Jesus did say, this man was born blind to bring glory to God. Some of our difficulty comes so that we can give glory to God. But my prayer is, Lord... Don't let our people suffer more than is necessary to bring glory to your name. You can write that down and use it in your prayers. God, don't let them suffer any more than is necessary to bring glory to your name. Keep your focus on the eternal perspective. Guys, this world is temporary. I don't care how good that chocolate cake... Oh, that, that I don't know what million dollar... Delbert calls it the million dollar cake, Donna. I don't know what's in there. But it's good. Oh, just before lunch and I'm talking about food again. <laughs> so good. But guys, that's not all there is. The very best thing you've ever experienced in this world is still not all there is. There's something better coming. There's a great story about little sweet little grandma lady that passed away in her 90s and everybody was relieved that she wasn't suffering anymore and everything. But she had a specific request and they said, make sure you put a fork in my hand before you close the lid on the coffin and leave it with me. What? Well, you ever notice when you're at a nice dinner and they're serving you good food and everything and they start to take the plates away but they say, hang on to your fork because the best's coming? When you close the cover on my coffin, 
Let me hang on to my fork because the best is coming. Amen. That's where we should live. Oh yeah, we've got to live here. We've got to go through the, all the grunge and the drudgery. We've got to do all the things. And some days it's hard and God will help us. But folks, never lose sight of the fact that there is something better coming. So much better. This world is not everything. Jesus said, lay up your treasures in heaven, not on earth. How do you do that? Pay it forward. Do a kind deed. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. That's how you lay up treasures in heaven. Obey Him in everything, and He's going to reward you tremendously. Well, quickly, what's my action plan? You know, this really almost knocked me out of my chair. Make up your mind. I'm going to get a little bit blunt. Some of us act like we don't believe what we say we believe. We're scared of the devil. Or we're scared of something. God said, Jesus said many times, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Do you believe or not? Make up your mind. And then you say, well, I know that's not good, but I'm going to do it anyway. Do you believe God or not? Some actions are going to bring judgment. Get away from the sinful people. If Lot had stayed in Sodom and Gomorrah, he would have been destroyed along with the sinners. Make up your mind. Do you believe or not? Do you believe the whole Bible? That we are baptized and then filled by the Holy Spirit. See, baptized means cleansed with fire. Baptized with the Holy Spirit means cleansed with fire. Water washes off the body. The fire of the Holy Spirit washes your soul, your spirit cleanses you of the stains of sin and of the world and makes you pure and holy through and through. That's sanctification. Then you follow and obey. Amen. And that's continuing sanctification. There's a moment that it's done and then there's time and time again like the church in the book of Acts. So they came back and said, God, we need you again. And he filled them again and he shook the place again and he did it all over again because that's the way he works with us. Do you believe that or not? If you believe, leave your sinful nature behind. Die to the sinful nature and become alive to Christ. Galatians 2.20 Leave your sinful nature behind. Guys, I can't live with myself if I don't preach one of these sermons every once in a while. And I don't mean to be hard on you. But sometimes we're just making excuses and crying and whining around and God says, you want some cheese with that wine? You know. Leave your sinful nature behind. And remember, success in your spiritual walk comes when you learn to hear and obey the leading of the Holy Spirit. He said, you have ears, listen. The Holy Spirit is speaking. That's the way I interpret that passage in Revelation. You have ears, listen. Listen to what the Holy Spirit is speaking to you. As we pause and prepare for communion, please talk to God. It's not hard to do if you just remember how much He loves you. Tell Him and ask Him for help because He knows our flesh is weak. Spirit is willing, flesh is weak. Tell Him that you want to be the best you can be. Tell Him that you want to be pure and holy and filled with the Spirit and ask Him to help you hear and obey.